How's the royal family? I pray that everyone is doing well. Well, my royal family, it's going to be a long video. And we just going to roll with it. Now, this was quite interesting to me, my royal family. From one of my elders, they send me like a five-minute video of some reporters going undercover trying to file a police report and the pushback that they got was amazing not shocking to me at all but was amazing and this further proves up the food chain that when they're talking about police reform it's a lot of internal things that's going on they got a lot of gatekeepers in there because this is why the cops are quite smug they do a lot of dirt in the streets of America and some people naively think that I can go in and file a police report and the police are you know the gobbledygook that they speak of is you know they're neutral you're a citizen I'm a pol I'm a peace officer you have the right to come here and file a police report in fact um, the police well, they don't know, a lot of them really don't know, that we pay them. That money, that, that check that they get, that comes from the taxpayers. But they don't treat us like it comes from us. And then some of us don't even realize it. And so um, there have been a many of folks that have filed a police report, and it gathers dust. And it doesn't matter the race of the person, the gender of the person. They're going to intercept that um, paperwork. So it's also quite dangerous to be also inside a police department too. All of it is dangerous because uh, they live by the code. They literally die by the code. So I have something I'm gonna read to the royal family and then we're gonna get into this very long video. Okay, let's get this out. Okay, this was done a year ago. Hidden cams show it's nearly impossible to file a complaint against a police officer in Florida. And it's terrifying. Receiving a complaint about your service is always awkward. People, people rarely like to admit when they done wrong. However, it seems that for some South Florida police departments, Filing a complaint is next to impossible as this series of undercover videos show you better than a damn good reason for your complaint because entering a police station without one can be scary, risky, and even downright dangerous. Several investigators over a period of some years went to visit several police departments around the state with the simple task of obtaining a complaint form, nothing more than that. They were met with intimidation, threats, and even arrests by these insecure cops who abuse their positions in quite a shocking way. All this despite having a policy of not only allowing citizens to um, legally obtain a form but fill it out and return it anonymously. <laughs> it's not shocking to us, not in our world. Suspicions among police officers was high. The right, the right to anonymity usually went straight out of the window, so they um, went on the defense and wanted to know the investigators, the identity, and the reason for the complaint from um, anti-social behaviors to threats and downright aggressiveness, where um, we were, you begin to wonder exactly why these police are so um, self-conscious? What's going on down there in South Florida? That's going on throughout the United States. A polite request was often met with a flat out refusal to cooperate, followed by a line of questioning that cast suspicion on the, the complainant. It turns out that police officers in the United States 
often share a blue code of science, silence, which means that they do not turn each other in for misconduct, while some officers have called this code a myth. A 2005 survey um, found evidence that it does indeed exist. Perhaps this goes some way to explain the hostility. This case went even further, um, went even further into violence as the police, as the officer realized that he was being filmed. The complainant here asked to see the um, policies about filming in the police station before he was violently grabbed in a um, arm lock and slammed against the wall. Oh yeah, they always doing dirt. When evasive cops um, wouldn't cooperate with a request for a complaint form, some investigators were persistent in demanding that their rights be recognized in responding. This officer threatened to make up a um, fictitious scenario so he could throw the investigator in jail. Let's see here. Is that it? Let's see here. Okay. Let's see here. That is it, my royal family. So we're going to get into it. Going to be quite juicy. CBS 4 News at 11. We sent undercover cameras into dozens of police stations. We wanted to find out how people would be treated and what the procedures are for filing complaints against police officers. I-Team investigator Mike Kirsch is here now with his investigation into what some might consider police station intimidation. Police departments around the country, like here in Tallahassee, give citizens police complaint forms all the time, no questions asked. But walk into a police station in South Florida trying to find out how to file a complaint and watch what happens. Yeah, I wanted to find out how to file a complaint against an officer. I just wanted to find out how to do it. I mean, have a form or something that I could take with well, me? Well, you got to tell me first, and then i got to hear what's going on. you got to tell me what the complaint is. Do you have a complaint form that I can, like, fill out or something like that? Might not be a, a legitimate complaint. Who decides that? I'm trying to help you. Like, if there's a form, why can't I just take it and leave, right? No, you don't leave with forms. You tell me what happened, and then I help you from there. Do you have, you have an idea on you? Why? You know what? You need to leave, okay? You're refusing to tell me what you want to do, okay? You're refusing to tell me who's involved, where it happened, what transpired. You're not cooperating with me one bit. I was just asking if you guys have a complaint form or, like, if there's some way for me to contact Internal Affairs. Why are you cursing at me? Where do you live? Where do you live? Office of Ethics. All right, first row. If you're not going to tell me where you live, what your name is, or anything like that, right? I mean, if you're going to, like, I mean, if I ask... Are you on medication? Why would you ask me something like that? Because you're not answering any of my questions. So I'm on medication? I asked you. It's free country. I can ask you that. Okay, you're right. So you're not going to tell me where you are. You're not going to tell me what the problem is. You're not going to identify yourself. All I asked you was, like, how do I contact you? You said you had a complaint. You said my officers are acting in an appropriate manner. Leave now. Leave now. Find out, like, how you file the complaint. That's what I'm asking. 
If you think you can walk in here and go straight to the director of Metro Day Police without telling me any details, you can't do it. And I, for some reason, you think that. I don't know why. You think it's a big conspiracy that I'm gonna, we're gonna hide some information about what happened to you? I don't know. Is it a traffic ticket? Is it something that, you know, a discourtesy complaint? What is it? He stole your lunch money? Uh, did he steal your money? Did he, you know, have sex with your wife? What? something like well first of all why don't you tell me what happened and i'll tell you if somebody did something wrong to you i mean like i feel like i know like i mean if somebody did something wrong i mean like i mean i you know maybe not sometimes people don't some people think that we're not allowed to do certain things and we are and sometimes you know some guys take it overboard and they're not allowed to do that right you know i don't know what happened right right yeah i mean i i'm not gonna like i don't know i don't want to talk I mean, I don't have issues, man. The real issue seems to be why can't a complaint form against the police be found seemingly anywhere at South Florida Police Department? Is there like just a form that I can fill out? Is there a form or something? Is there just something I can fill out? You guys don't have like a complaint form or anything? This like hidden camera test was carried out by a police abuse watchdog group called the Police Complaint Center. Remarkably, of 38 different police stations tested around South Florida, all but three had no police complaint forms. Is there a form or something? Is there just something I can fill out? You guys don't have like a complaint form or anything like that? Florida City PD and Homestead PD had them, as did the city of Miami, in three languages, English, Spanish, and Creole. But Miami Police Chief John Timoney was in no mood to gloat after hearing about the social skills of some cops. Why don't you shut up? And the behavior of other police officers would ask how complaints might be filed against their fellow cops. Do you want to visit my jail cell instead? Less than one minute into a stop at the Pine Lawn Police Department and tester Greg Slate is threatened with jail time. Sergeant Christopher Clay acknowledged his department has complaint forms, but he refused to give one up. So you're not going to give me a complaint form? Right. Slate continued pressing Sergeant Clay. You're not allowed to give me that complaint for me, or you just won't? I might be speaking a foreign language to you. You have to contact the chief. He's the only one who hands out the forms. And that's your policy? That's, that's, your, that's your official policy? That's your official policy. I left the police department when he told me that their official policy was not to give out complaint forms after hours. And that was the only thing that I wanted him to tell me. He thought it was over until Sergeant Clay met him outside and said, get out of my city. Yeah, get out of your city. What happens if I do? What happens if I do? What happens if I do? The sound is janky on this one, family. Forgive me. I have no control over it. Sergeant Clay. I asked him what specifically what the incident was about. I can't help you if I don't know what the incident was about. Is there anything wrong with asking for a complaint form? 
We, we, what all we do it is, so we can track of them, feel like a control number. So we know exactly what complaints were coming in. Who wasn't getting it. And we have, you know, we try to do things, and I explain to them, this is what you need to do. I explained to him three times. But can you arrest somebody for not getting it? But he ain't under arrest. I didn't want him to calm down to get on the stand. But Slate was under arrest with an official court date and summons. Here you go. We're done. Will you throw me out? This is police surveillance video of a test in Independence, Missouri last year. The officers refused to give him a complaint form and then arrested him. What are you doing, man? Oh, Slate ended up in the hospital. In Dallas, another police complaint center tester encountered this deputy who appeared to reach for a weapon. Oh, officer, how long do you need a problem? Okay. They call you in for me? I don't know. Oh, you're here to make a complaint? Yeah, 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 well, no, I want to find out how to, to do it first. Did I get your name? Rich. So let me see your license. Well, what, if I, what, if, what if I don't have it on me? That's, you know, failing to identify yourself, I can take you and put you in jail. All right? Is that what you want? No, I don't want to go there. Okay, give me your license then. And some, like San Bernardino Sheriff's Department Corporal Ray Austin, had an intimidating message. This is the way it works. They'll, they'll interview you with a tape, and then they'll talk to the officer, they'll do an investigation, and if your allegations are unfounded, the officer has the right to see you. But that's not the policy of the San Bernardino Sheriff's Department. It states that any citizen can take a complaint form home, and they can fill it out anonymously. Jones left feeling as if he was being threatened into not filing a report, and even the captain agreed. I can see how somebody who was listening to the, the corporal would feel intimidated. After seeing the results of our test here at Sheriff's Headquarters in San Bernardino, we wanted to find out if the same attitude existed at other Sheriff's facilities. So the very next day, we sent our tester to Victorville. What's the complaint process? Again, Jones was told he wouldn't get a complaint form without giving his name and other information. This time, Sergeant Pat Daly made it seem like our tester was the criminal. We have to take names to know where, how this is going. We just don't give people no names. And I, I would feel that you got something to hide then, if, you're, if you're this suspicious or this secret. And when Jones remains reluctant, the sergeant draws his own conclusion. We're arrested before, right? And why would your sergeant draw that conclusion that he's been arrested before? Or try I, to even elicit a response from them? I, I, I can't answer for the sergeant. I don't know. Sir? Sir? Can I speak with you for a second? Um, I'm waiting on this. I need to speak with you for a second. I see that you're recording. Yes. You're not allowed to record or your cell phone in here. In the lobby, you can record us all day. The nine emergency. Is it a policy? Yes. Can you show me? I don't have the policy. I would like to. Okay, but you need to turn the camera off. I'll turn it off. I asked you to. Dude, I asked you to do. What is your problem? What is your problem? What is your, what is your problem? Ah! Well, it really sounds like you're being a little bitch about it. Why don't you just take it like a man? Belendi Delanois says a station house cop called him a little bitch when he tried to complain about alleged racial bias by a patrol officer. The I-team used a hidden camera to test how Nassau County cops treat people who have a complaint about alleged police abuse. But first, Belendi's story that prompted the undercover investigation you're about to see. Mm. He placed his hand on his gun, he screamed at me, he's like, no, you don't belong here. Belendi said a cop confronted him when he was in the mostly white community of East Meadow, Long Island. He screamed at me, why are you even parked in front of these people's houses? It was late at night in early September. Belendi picked up some food at an all-night diner and went to hang out with a friend from college. He was getting out of his parked car when the cop pulled up behind him. After the cop checked Belendi's license and registration, Belendi says the cop made this demand. He hands it to me and tells me to get the hell out of here. Belendi then asked the cop for his name and badge number. Belendi says the cop retaliated by writing him tickets. When he asked me tickets, he said, here. There's my name and badge number. Two of the three tickets were for moving violations, even though Belendi was parked. Get this. He never saw me driving. Later that day, Belendi went up to a cop on the desk at the first precinct to file a complaint. 
I told him the situation what happened. Valenti says that cop then became abusive. He says to me, well, it really sounds like you're being a little bitch about it. You're making a bigger deal out of something that is not. We wanted to find out if Nassau County cops are discouraging complaints about alleged police abuse. We went undercover to investigate using Maurice Hayes as a tester. Maurice was the man who helped us investigate whether or not it was a crime to drive while black in Nassau County. This is Maurice in our hidden camera video. He ended up handcuffed for over an hour, even though he'd committed no crime, not even a traffic violation. We decided to test what would happen if Maurice wanted to complain about his treatment that night we sent him to a different part of Nassau County wearing a hidden camera he went to four precincts and asked this simple question how do I go about filing a complaint against the officer three precincts flunked our test they gave the wrong information here in the third precinct in Williston Park a sergeant insists there was only one way to do it I have to know what happened I mean you just can't come in here and say I, I have a complaint you're gonna fill it out there's no such thing you what happened I don't know what the hell happened. But that's not the only way, and the sergeant should have known better. If you feel reluctant to talk at a station house, you don't have to. According to the Nassau County Police Department's own policy, you can file a complaint by phone or by mail, or go directly to Internal Affairs. I want to know your options. How do I file a complaint? Maurice keeps at it. He asks 12 times at the 3rd Precinct. I can't call over the phone. Finally, the sergeant tells him he can call internal affairs, but then discourages him from doing that. Nobody's in the internal affairs right now. 6-4, Kelly. So to me, and if it's worthy of an internal affairs investigation, it's, it's a complicated process. Then, this inappropriate question. What do you have, warrants or something? No, I don't have no warrants. So why are you so nervous about the program? I'm in a police station. Been, been here before, I guess? No. Why does that sergeant suggest that Maurice is a criminal? Remember, he's done nothing except ask how to file a complaint about police abuse. Things went from bad to worse at the 5th Precinct in Elmont. Maurice asks the same how-to question. How do I go about filing a complaint against an officer? Listen to the cop's answer. This is not New York City. New York City will take a complaint for anything. We don't take a complaint for anything. Yeah, of course. Then more hostility. We don't have a form just to bitch on because you want to make a complaint. This woman right here is trying to file a complaint with the 46th precinct. I'm here to make a complaint. Is that is that the concept here? Yeah. Um, so let me ask you this: If I was to fill something out as far as what, when, where, and how, mm -hmm. and bring it in, mm -hmm. are you the person that's going to oversee that? Most likely. Because I'm here. I'm wanted for that. When did it happen today? Yeah. So, officer, let me ask you this, Sergeant. If I fill out a complaint in that regards, mm -hmm. and you oversee it, I mean, you already have something against me already. No, I don't have anything against you. I mean, but for you to say that if I don't talk to you, you're just going to arrest me or find something to arrest me on, that's something against me. Mm -hmm. Well, why don't you want to talk to me? I don't get it. I, I, honestly, I don't want to get into it like that. I, I just came in to get some documentation, something of that nature, so if it's a complaint, something of that nature, I can fill out a complaint and have it heard and go on from there. But, I mean, if, you, if you're telling me that... You know, you, you find something to rest me on. I mean, you know, that's the problem right there. If you wish he, he assaulted my husband. If you wish to make a written statement, if you wish to make a written statement, uh, that's perfectly fine. Uh, I, I will just also tell you that... The volume fluctuates up and down, my royal family. So I pray that y'all hear this. I'm going to continue to let it roll. Wait, this up, this, uh, it's gonna occur, occur. Um, I don't want to get into it, you know? I'm just trying to find out. Okay, sir, let me see your driver's license. 124 agent is 1019 PD, please, in the lobby. I need a subject here in the lobby because you're using the ID. I'm getting my ID. Yeah, I got an ID. Can I see it? Do I have to give it? Well, you're gonna have to tell us who you are if you're making a report. No, nah, that's all right, then. Oh, I need to see your ID, sir. So I'd like to, I've sent it to you as an email, and I would like to read it to you. So let me do that. Ahead, take a few moments. Thank ahead. you very much. I appreciate it. On June 29, 2011, at 3.44 p.m., I noticed a silver van with nobody in it, illegally parked at a hydrant across from my, the street from my building. 
on the northwest corner of 102nd Street and Riverside Drive. So to be cautious, I photographed the plates. The New York plates are numbered DMC 9287. Then I noticed that there was a police parking plate in the window, which was issued from the 81st Precinct, which is in Bedford-Stuyvesant, Brooklyn. As I was taking the pictures, a guy in a Yankees cap approached me and asked, do you got a problem? I said, the van is parked illegally. He said, you people always notice a pattern. I did not understand what he meant, and I said, excuse me? You people always notice a fucking pattern, he said. I said, what do you mean? He said, there was another guy parked up there, and someone complained about that. I did not understand what he was talking about. I, I asked, do you know what the van is doing here? And he replied, well, talk to the cop over there. I looked in the direction he was pointing and asked, who's the cop? To my surprise, he said, your fucking mother. What? I said, what? And he repeated more aggressively, your fucking mother. I realized this was the cop from the van, and that, or that this was the uh, occupant of the van, and that he was being hostile, hostile and provocative. I asked, who are you, stepped back but to a, about 10 feet from him, and raised my phone to take a picture. The guy lunged at me and grabbed me by the neck, throwing me against the building with great force. You take a fucking picture of me, and I'll fucking crush your face, he said. A woman and some kids were walking by, and I yelled, call the police. The guy yelled to them mockingly, yeah, call the police. He then released my neck and pushed me away. As I stumbled away, he yelled, you take a fucking picture of me, and I'll fucking kill you. I spoke to a witness who lives in the neighborhood who told me I could find her if I needed. Hello? Yes, sir. Okay, I appreciate you letting me uh, put that on the record. Anything else, sir? But, um, that's all uh, that I have to say about that, but I'm very happy to answer any of your questions. Okay, sir? Mm-hmm. He pushed you, am I correct? No, he grabbed me around the neck and pinned me against the wall by my neck, causing me to choke, and he threatened to kill me. Okay. Sir, do you go around taking pictures of vehicles parked illegally? Um, I, I'm Detective uh, Hinton, um, why are you asking me that question? Because when someone, when you take pictures of people's vehicles, you know... Yes, go on. Sometimes they react in that kind of manner. Yes, and is that against so the law, or is that... Stuff is in, that harm, in harm's way? D Detective, if I see a car in the street and I want to take a picture of it, I can do that. That is my right as a citizen of the United States. So why would you put yourself in harm's way? <laughs> okay, you obviously didn't understand or you weren't listening to what I was talking no, about. No, 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 no. sir. You Clear. said to sir. me that you fit for your safety. Didn't he, you tell me he that? Acted in, no, he acted in such a manner oh, to so make me... Oh, you didn't, you didn't tell me that? You're a difficult person. Uh, I'm really not. I'm, because I'm, I'm, you're making this too long, and I'm about to get off the phone with you. Well, listen, I'm, I already I, did my job. I took your complaint. Yes, but I have also a complaint about the 24th precinct, which I'd like right. to file. I'm going to place you on hold, sir. Okay, sir? Okay. There's I one thing I need, I need to clarify No, 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 sir, sir, sir. I'm getting off the phone. I already sir, there's something security. I need to clarify this is with you. What's going to happen? Speak, sir. Speak, speak. Because you won't get off the phone anyway. Listen, I'm, I'm asking you to do your job. You're with the... You, you kept me waiting for, for an hour... I'm speaking now, and I'm telling you a complaint. It's your job, and I pay your salary, and I'm telling you about a complaint. Say what? I pay your salary. No, Who you do you don't, think sir. You do not. Who pays your salary? Please. Don't now, say what you have to say, sir. Say what you have to say. I wrote in my complaint that what the guy did to me was menacing in the second degree, and I, and I wrote out the reasons why that was, and he put down harassment. And it was not harassment by definition, by the law, 121-4, menacing in the second degree, he or she engages in a course of conduct, intentionally placing or attempting to place a person in reasonable fear of physical injury, serious physical injury or death. He said he was going to kill me if I did something that I have every right to do. And it's no difference I'm taking a picture. He, if he doesn't want me taking a picture, he can turn around or he can walk away. There is no provision of law that says if someone takes a picture of you, you can grab them by the neck and threaten to kill them. Okay? That's the law. I shouldn't have to tell you that because I'm a civilian and you're a cop. But that is the law, and it's written right here in 12014. It choked every hair out of your throat. Pardon me? I'm sorry? What did you just say? What's your complaint, sir? Who am I speaking with? Same person, sir. Did you just say something about choking my throat? 
I say you already mentioned that the, the person choked your throat. What shall the complaint? Right. And my complaint is that they wrote it down as harassment. And I said, it's not harassment. I'm not alleging harassment. I'm not. I'm making a complaint about menacing and stalking. And I read them the law, and the guy told me something untrue. He said, if he threatens your life, that's harassment. Yeah, exactly. It's just some talk. That's all. I'm okay. sorry? Go ahead, sir. Are you talking to me? I said, go ahead. I told you that I alleged no. stalking. I alleged a misdemeanor of stalking and menacing in the second and third degree. And he wrote down harassment. But what the guy did to me is not harassment. It's menacing in the third and second degree, and it's stalking. I'd like to add murder. You'd like to add murder? <laughs> Do you know this, this uh, conversation is recording? And you just said you'd like to add murder. It's your word against mine. No, it's not. It's the tape's word against yours. Okay, well, it's the tape against my word. You're making it difficult. I'm not making I anything question, difficult. You, you know, you're making it I'm making a complaint that the guy put down the wrong charge. Okay, and I have that I have that here on, on writing, and I'll add that to your complaint. Okay, you didn't say that, though. You said I should add, I'd like to add murder. So the list say, of, anything of, else you would like to add? One more thing I have to You said to me, you asked me if I went around taking pictures of cars, and I want to know why you said that. Because if you fear for your safety, why would you put yourself in harm's way? When you take pictures of somebody else's property, sometimes they react that way. And so if you and how, does that, safety, how does that? Why how would you? Why would you take a picture of other people's property? Because now listen to me carefully. He was on my block in front of my house. He does not have the right to push me or tell me he's so going to kill my me. So my understanding, my understanding is it has nothing when to do when with. I first got this complaint mm -hmm. that you was taking a picture of the vehicle because it was parked illegally. I mean that's your right to do. People can still react in a violent manner. Yes, so but that's whether against you the say stalking <laughs> or his vehicle parked illegally, yeah, but it's, tend it's to against react in a negative I manner. know, but, but you know what? If I go up to you, or if you call me a bad name, and I hit you with a pipe, I'm the one who gets arrested. And they don't say, well, I mean, I can't say, well, he called me a bad name, so I hit him with a pipe. That's just not the law. The law is I can take a picture of any darn thing I want to. No, we're not going by what the law states. Of course we are. The law is the law. Of course we're going by the law. And the fact that I took the car, the picture of the car, does not change anything at all. I can go around taking pictures of people in New York City with absolute impunity. And if somebody punches me, they go to jail. I don't. And if you disagree with that, then you simply don't know the law. The fact is, it's a totally inappropriate question for you to ask me, why am I taking a picture of a car? I could have taken the picture of the car because I thought it was a pretty car and I wanted to take a picture of it because it's the kind of car I want to get. And if the guy comes and, he, and throws me against the wall, and tells me he's going to kill me, he's the one who gets in trouble, not me. And that's why I'm saying that for you to tell me that I did something wrong or imply that I was uh, jeopardizing, I was doing something inappropriate by taking a, a picture of the car, that's the point here. And I, I, I'd like to hear a, a, a confirmation of that because otherwise I'm very, very troubled by your attitude. You're saying to me that somehow I shouldn't have taken a picture of the car and this cop had the right to bang my head against the wall? and threatened to kill me because I took a picture of his car? <laughs> That's what I'm complaining about. <laughs> you understand? Duncan Hicks was inside the Victorville Police Station this month to file a police report. Unsatisfied with how the receptionist and deputy were handling it, Hicks recorded part of the incident. He was very disrespectful to me, very rude to me. Hicks says this was his third time here and also called once and says this time the deputy refused to write his report down and then took it a step further. This is not explaining the incident, sir. Okay, Duncan, you know what, man? I'm about getting tired of you and you're about to go to jail, just so you know. What I'm going to jail for? I'll create something, you understand? You'll go to jail, you understand that? Uh, I was shocked. I didn't do nothing wrong. You know, I, I'm a law by citizen. You can't say that. How are you going to create something? That's against the law. Recording me like that? That's illegal. Without my knowledge, you want to go to jail for that too? According to the San Bernardino County Sheriff's Department, recording in the station is allowed. We then traveled to neighboring Huntington Park, and it seemed that word traveled with us. I want to know, I want to file a complaint against one of your officers 
What, what do I do? Do I do a form or something? Cause Weren't you just at Bell Police Department? Yeah. Sergeant Michael Craven was apparently alerted by Bell Police, but instead of realizing it was a test, he proceeded to violate his own department's complaint policy. But I'm just ticked off about it. I don't feel like getting into that. That's the reason. I mean, there's no reason. I can't give you a complaint. But it's just a form. I can't get into it. I know what it is, but I need to know what it's about. So if you're not happy with me, then you can come back tomorrow morning and talk to my chief of police. Jones didn't want to provide information and didn't have to according to police policy. But Sergeant Craven didn't know or didn't care. You have to let me know where it occurred. If you don't know where it occurred, how, how can we even investigate this thing? Because if you don't know where it happened, sure at, if you don't know what day it happened, at, then there ain't nothing I can do for you. So if you're not happy with me, take my name, it's right there, Sergeant Craven. You come back tomorrow morning and complain to my chief of police. We did just that. So if you're not happy with me, then you can come back tomorrow morning and talk to my chief of police. Assistant Chief Michael Visser viewed the tape. Huntington Park wasn't alone in policy violations. The Culver City Police Department watch commander also refused to give out a form without any information. We need to know who you are, where you live, phone number, that kind of stuff. Every time well, I give out a form, I have to register that with the chief's office as to who I gave it to and the nature of the complaint. That violates the Culver City Police policy. A police lieutenant told me anyone can come in and get a complaint form, and complaints can be filed anonymously, even if the forms are registered with the chief's office. It would certainly appear to be a stonewalling effect. You don't know where to how, how can we even investigate this? Larry Paul is a 40-year law enforcement veteran. He reviewed the undercover videotapes and says the Culver City Watch Commander and others who refuse to give out forms may not be ignorant of policy, but trying to protect their own. It would appear to me that he was certainly attempting to discourage any complaints being registered through his department. The Huntington Park assistant chief refused to tell me if Sergeant Craven faced any disciplinary action because he violated department policy. Culver City Police were invited to respond to our report, but they refused. It's 2 a.m. on a Tuesday night. Our tester, Doug Jones, is walking into one of the most notorious police stations in the LAPD, the Rampart Division. His purpose, to ask about filing a complaint. Hey, hey look, if I want to file a complaint against one of your officers, what do I do? Your Honor, I would like to thank you for the opportunity to address this court. Rampart Division is, of course, where Rafael Perez admitted shooting innocent victims, like Javier Ovando. And this is where we began our test of the LAPD complaint process. Yeah. In Victorville, our tester was refused a form, violating department policy. As soon as you can explain to me what's going on, good morning, I have to help you out. In San Bernardino, Sheriff Corporal Ray Austin's conduct was found to be intimidating by his own captain. If your allegations are founded, the officer has the right to see you. At Lakewood, I did find something that you can actually nail in. And at Palmdale, okay. you just snow it and you send it to here. Jones was able to take a complaint form home so he could fill it out anonymously. But at two other stations we tested, he was told there was no such form. We also tested the Long Beach Police Department. We were told that forms were only filled out by supervisors, and Jones had to put his name on any complaint. Oh, I can't, like, just send one in, like, anonymously, or just, you know, has to be in person. You can't file a complaint anonymously. But the Long Beach Police Department policy clearly states you can file anonymous complaints. In all, we tested 31 police locations. 19 followed policy. They provided complaint forms or complied with proper procedures. 12 did not follow policy. They either had no forms or no supervisors on duty who could give us one, or they violated one or more procedures. I want to file a complaint against one of your deputies. What do I do? Jones, who works for the Police Complaint Center, a national police watchdog group, says the percentages are about average. They've done the tests in many major cities and say the findings usually work to improve police policies. We do tests, and that's what we're conducting is tests, not to catch them with their pants down. I mean, there are um, agencies that are done very well. Do you guys have like a complaint form for them? Is there, you just come in here however you want, some kind of paper or pen? I mean, obviously, you guys don't have a form. Well, it doesn't have to be on the form. Well, I mean, do you guys have a form? Some people write us letters. But do you guys have a form? 
I feel like we're beating around the bush right now. Oh shit. Let's well, not let's stop beating around the bush. You got three thinking out here. Yeah. I'm sure you guys have a pen and paper. Let's take it up and get thrown in the trash. Yeah. Hey, must have a weapon on you. Hey, uh, you three need to step outside. Why? Yeah. On September 5th, 2014, I attended the Police Accountability March that marked the one-year anniversary of the shooting death of veteran Dennis Reynoso. While filming the march, I noticed an undercover Lynn police vehicle shadowing the peaceful crowd. I approached the vehicle and requested the officer's name and badge number. The Lynn police vehicle struck me hard enough that its mirror folded back, and the driver immediately stopped and got on his radio after he hit me. The officer did not check to see if I was injured and did not offer any sort of aid, nor did he ever identify himself. On September 8th, I entered the Lynn Police Department to report the incident. Lieutenant Shorten took an initial report. So I'm here because on Friday I had a police officer from the Lynn Police uh, drive a vehicle into me. There's no record whatsoever? I watched him call in, so that's interesting. I, don't, I, don't see anything. I then found the vehicle in the station's back lot. So uh, it looks like, oh look, they repaired, the they repaired it. All right, so they didn't, uh, okay. So look, they did not, uh, all right, so you can see it is detached from uh, when it hit me. And they had to repair it with that screw that definitely uh, was not there. As I documented the vehicle, a Lynn police cruiser pulled up. Howdy. Uh, this is the car that hit me. Yeah. Hey guys, this is private property. Gotta get out of the This is public property. Uh, your police station. Can I have your name and uh, badge number, please? For your ba name and badge. Can I see your ID card, please? I don't have an ID card. Really? That's illegal. Under Massachusetts general law, it absolutely is. I'm making a uh, lawful request under Massachusetts law for your ID card. I left the lot and approached the main desk. Howdy. Uh, sorry to bother again. Oh, hey. Uh, uh, why? No, I haven't made my uh, report yet. You made your report. Well, actually, first of all, I'd like to make a complaint about this gentleman here. Second of all, what's the complaint? Your refusal to identify yourself uh, is against the law. Okay. Literally. Um, I'm sure if you, know, if you ever have an appointment with the chief, you're talking to him, you'll get my information. Well, I'm sure I will. But uh, in the meantime, I'd like to make a complaint. Are you saying that I can't do that? Not with us. Not with you. Who do I make a complaint with? The chief's the best guy. The chief's the best guy. Okay. So make an appointment. Okay. I'll do that. This may be done. No, you don't. Maybe that. Howdy. I'm out there waiting for Dave and not, so. Yeah, trying to make. They were talking to Dave and not waiting, so I don't know what's, uh, what's up with that. What is it that you're looking for? Uh, well, I found the car that hit me on Friday. I was reporting it earlier. Um, it's out back. Okay, and what are you doing going in private property videotaping police cars? What? Okay. You're subject to arrest for going back into private property. Am I being arrested? Police cars. Huh? Am I being arrested? I said you are subject to arrest okay. for going out there. Now, what is it that you need? Uh, well, I'm still trying to report that a police car drove into me, and I found it. It's literally out back. The officer in charge has your complaint. So are you trying to stop them from... He literally does not have all the information he needs. He has the information that he needs and documented to send it on for additional investigation if needed. Oh, okay. He has documented the complaint. It's being forwarded to the people that need the complaint, which means oh, that you have no other business that you need to be doing here. Right? I would also like to make a complaint about this officer. May I please talk to the lieutenant? No. No? no. You're going to block the, the complaint about this officer, and you're not going to let me What's explain. What's the complaint you want to make about that officer? Refusal to ID under Massachusetts law. He gave you his badge number. He, I gave you my best. He flat out refused. He did not show a uh, ID card. Did, it was did, only when he came back out here to harass me further after telling me to come in here. I'm not harassing you. I'm just talking to you. Okay. I, I've asked you several times. Now I'm telling you. Leave the police station. I have criminal complaint against Robert Jeremy. He violated the law. He violated my rights. And I want to file a criminal complaint and have the agency investigated. I'm a victim of a crime. So, I would like you to be investigated for who and the no, sir, we're not going to be investigation. So you want to make a complaint against me, I didn't say I want to make I will make a complaint against you to the state attorney. And why else would you do it? Well, 
I'm not going to leave this job. I'm not asking to leave. If you don't... I'm asking to file a uh, criminal uh, report. We're not filing anything. Okay. I will report. You're under arrest. Did you provide Mr. Jernigan with any... Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. I'm not going to say this. Well, that is the end of that, my royal family. That was 35 minutes of fuckery. And we can see, um, going down to these police stations, filing a report is quite dangerous because they make up shit as they go. And some of this footage I could tell was years ago and they instantly get suspicious and everything because they always doing wrong. And the thing that bugs me on, um, um, when they start talking about police and their conduct and all, they always say 99.99% of the um, cops are good cops. That, that, that's an insult. That's a lie. And actually, they brought this upon themselves. Um, the way that they conduct they sell, conduct their selves and the way that they continue to do to citizens throughout the United States. So there is a consistent pattern and um, you can see immediately, you know, that you go and file a report, they're going to throw it away. The gatekeepers are there, you know, they're going to make sure they contact people. And did you, did y'all, did y'all pick up on when the, the guy undercover um, said, we pay, you know, basically we pay you. A lot of them don't know that. See, they come in here with the mentality that um, they're going to crack some heads and they're going to keep people in line and the job is fun and all these type of things. And now it ain't going to be, it ain't fun no more because you brought it upon yourself by being rolled. And they just figured that they could conduct themselves like that to infamy. And eventually things come to an end. And, um... That's something else that needs to be put in place with um, um, police reform. When you file a complaint, you can't you, you can't you can't go directly. I mean, you're going to the devil's den, basically, you know, so that don't make no sense at all. You know, they're going to make sure they intercept that that paperwork. It has to go to another entity where people are unquote transparent. See, because of their conduct. And they use that word transparent is because of their conduct. Because immediately they're protecting their own and it don't work like that. So it's like they against us and we against them based on their behavior. And in a lot of situations, um, when people when people are called, you know, call the police. They really need somebody there that, you know, might be having a breakdown and um, many of people, you know, may have some mental health issues and they end up dead because that's how they going. That's how they got got them. I'm not going to put it all on training because you come in with an attitude that um, whatever their attitudes is. And then it doesn't matter the race of the cop because we've seen a few black cops and how they get down. It is their culture, their environment. So now the space and time that we are in, it is really wigging them out that, oh my goodness, I, I don't have free range to kill black men, really and truly. So they're quitting everywhere. And my attitude is once your ass quit, you can never be the police again. But to be on the real, we don't need the police. We don't. They 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 cause more trouble. They they they're criminals. I remember I seen a video a while back. Some brothers was in the hood in Chicago, and it was one early morning, and they caught some pigs looking in the window at one of our royal daughters um, in bed. You know, they the ones that's out here doing this shit, and um. And they and um so the attitude, especially in New York, um, well, we're not gonna be here to police your neighborhoods and, and just watch what's gonna happen. Well, that didn't happen before and the crime rate went all the way down. See, the people need to police their neighborhoods and deal with people 
that's acting in a nefarious way and nip that shit in the in the bud you know but um it's just to, to, to me what's so crazy in america is that um you can have somebody who they know like okay like i give a good one i did a video a few months ago about that young lady who was th this man well um was um put her in prostitution she's a teenage prostitute and um you know he was abusing her and a number of other of our royal daughters and filming the sexual acts and all of this and they got all this footage and and everything and even the bank had even contacted them because based on how he was bringing the money in they knew that he was trafficking they they seen the they see, they have all the evidence and then they slow drag to go arrest him and then whatever transpired between that girl and him she ends up killing him and now now the da wants to do his job and he's all up in his feelings because people are saying hey this girl he's been grooming her for years and she just literally snapped but but don't remember this this is what i said about this um nine times out of ten the cop this the complaint that's being filed against them is someone that looks like them. Okay. And even as they go through the whole court process and stuff, nine times out of 10, they look like they sales. So when one of their own have been what they deem again, what they deem, um, victimized, they don't care what kind of crime they pull. They identify that person with they sales. So keep that in mind. That's why, even you know, we've been reporting videos for the last few years. A lot of white males been raping and they've been getting away with raping even their own. And uh, the judge will let them off this little tap on the wrist because he identified with himself. You don't see no big deal in it. All right. Now, say we police our own and we did the same thing. They would have a problem with it. These people are a contradiction. So at the end of the day, because I talk about the insanity of policing and everything, the part that's so insane to me is now they're trying to revamp all of this and let's structure it in a such a way where you continue to do the same thing. And then when we go down this checklist, um, then... There is no there is no room for us to squawk about anything. That's the insanity of this. That you want to keep doing what you're doing, but we're gonna we're gonna sit down at the bargaining table and come up with a way how we can continue to wipe out the royal family, let alone continue to subjugate the black man. And that is utterly insane and then on top of that us taxpayers keep f funding the insanity it must stop as i speak it doesn't make any sense at all so y'all put on these little these little monkey suits and then you're playing all day you know you the one that's ca causing chaos that's what's going on you know, you're not keeping no order or no peace in the streets. This is this is a, a social thing with them, a fun thing with them, all of that, just to mess over people's lives. So whatever their agenda is at the end of the day. So I just wanted to show that um, filing a police report is an extremely dangerous thing. And I'm pretty sure with the police reform that they're going to find a way where I guess um, because they're having the citizens involved, that there's some type of entity that they can go through to so the cops won't um, get their hands on it. And um, and I guess the citizens, but then that can be dangerous too because the citizens can be biased too. I mean, nothing is going to be squeaky clean. It's just like, wow. That's why I say at the end of the day, Esau just got to be totally eliminated. This whole thing has to be redone, redone, redone and all of that because um they 
they're going to uh, make sure they uphold white supremacy at the end of the day because that is what has worked for them. So uh, I don't see no police reform at all. No, no. I'm, I'm being realistic and it's, it's, it's just the new thing to speak of. And then the thing that pisses me off um, when these politicians want our vote, that's the first thing they throw up in our face um, about the policing and all that. They don't do that to the other communities, but us, because y'all always fucking with us. And this shit will come to a total end. So I'll just leave it wide open like that. So, my royal family, render your voice with your beautiful divine words. And as always, my royal family, I thank you for your love. I thank you for your support. And with that said, Ashe.